bit of knowledge, of will, of power, and he can create. And only an entity that has these attributes can create and have and sustain a universe. So that's the reason why I believe in it. Because I don't believe, for example, even this, like the ring that he was wearing, the example that I gave, if I saw it 200 years ago, yeah, randomly, if I saw it, I wouldn't believe it just randomly became a ring and had those marbles or diamonds or whatever you put in it. I would never think that. So that's why I but wanted... Oh, what? No, can, you, can you explain to me in the real world, there's this, this, as something has come in like randomly, without nothing. Something come into existence randomly. Can you believe in that? Like in this universe, like for example, when you see, uh, when you see like a wardrobe, when you see cars, when you see trees, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you there see the sun. Behind. Yeah. So how comes just yourself? Like, just like there is an explanation, like I said, evolution. But the thing is, do you agree that were we created by nothing? Hmm? Were we created by nothing? No, there was something at the beginning. Yeah. That's fine. That's what the there, there was the big bang. That's fine. Wait. Even though we don't believe in the big bang, but what we clearly can see that what Allah says. Also, in the Quran, there's like a few. There's like a few reasons why. About what? Yeah. yeah. About what? Like. The world was created in six days, okay. and then the world was created like it was, I don't remember exactly the yeah. days. Yeah. But there's like a few different explanations for how the world began. Yeah, that's fine. But the thing is, when Allah says He created the world in six days, Allah did not say that He did a Big Bang. To be honest, that's what some modern scholars what they do is they, yeah, which I, I disagree, that. which I disagree with, is that they use the Quran to justify a Big Bang, even yeah, 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 yeah. though none of the companions, none of the Sahaba have ever explained the, the origin of the universe. What we believe in is that we believe in Allah. He's the Creator, okay, and we worship Him. This is the right doctrine is very important to us. We we worship that one God, we worship Him without any partners, okay, and we follow all of His commandments. And we believe that Allah has given different prophets. The Prophet yeah. Moses came to His people, Isa came to His people, yeah, very good, Jesus. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He came to His nation, to His Ummah, which is even till now, till, the day, uh, till that time, to the Day of Judgment. So we have to believe in those prophets. So that's the reason why we believe in Islam as well. But the thing is, remember I said naturally, yeah? The natural inclination, that was very interesting to me, to be fair. Did you read the study in Cambridge? Did you, did, did you read the exact same no, study? No, 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 but I heard about it. Oh, you heard about it? Yeah, yeah, about the, like, the, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. So, so like, you know, of course, children are coming in the island and they run, and they're born with a natural inclination to believe in one creator. That's the most interesting thing as well. Do you know many individuals, how many creators they believe in? Christians, three creators, Jews, they believe... Does that affirm a creator? Yeah, there's different things, to be honest. You know, Hindus, they believe in hundreds of gods. So there's so many people that believe in these things. But we understand it's from the culture, it's from the environment because once they actually deeply research for example even the Hindu books it's not preserved the revelations that they have right now did not exist 4,000 years ago they cannot be back trays even the Jewish scriptures the Jewish scriptures yeah if you compare it to the time of Moses there's a 400 years gap so that's why when we believe in Islam we believe it because it's the most logical reasoning it's natural inclination it's fitra it aligns with you as well even for you I, I believed honestly I believe that you believe the God that exists but you're not accepting it in your mind I personally believe that I'm not joking. I personally believe that you believe God exists, but because you're being stubborn and because you want to get a different explanation. My opinion, my humble opinion. My humble opinion. I believe you're being stubborn. I just can't conceptualize it. Can I tell you why you're being stubborn? Because when you when when I spoke to you about evolution, because I wanted to see what is your criteria, how what do you believe the origin of the universe is? And when you said to me evolution, and when then you said fish, and then when you said they evolved into human beings, and when you said it just randomly and happened like this over a million years, I was like, he's like, I was like, is there any evidence? He goes, no, but I believe in it. So that's what I'm saying. That's so stubborn. Well, there is evidence. Yeah, I just don't but, know. Yeah, but the thing is, when I said the Islamic concept of Tawheed, yes, yeah, so when I said the Islamic concept of Tawheed, you said that makes logical sense, makes more logical sense than other religion. Yeah, 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 it makes more yeah, logical yeah. sense than all these that people coming to you and giving philosophy philosophical arguments, which I totally disagree with by the way. I don't use philosophy in my da'wah because we believe the Prophet Muhammad, he never used da'wah, peace be upon him. Yeah, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, philosophy, philosophy, philosophy. Yeah, yeah. he never used it. But also, yeah. a lot of guys afterwards, like, you know, what do you, do you, do you like uh, Al-Ghazali? We believe, there's an opinion about Ghazali, we believe he did philosophy and at the end of his life he repented from those works. And the reason being is because, you know, philosophy... Yeah, he had, yeah, of course. The reason being is because philosophy is very dangerous. Like, for example, if I believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, is the best of individuals to give da'wah, I believe his da'wah is perfect. At his time and at all times. And at all times includes the time that we're living in right now. I don't need to go to philosophy. I don't need to go to Aristotle or Plato to convey da'wah. I'll use the Quran, I'll use the Sunnah. Even, for example, when I spoke about God, I didn't use no philosophy, bro. Have you realized that? Did I use necessary existence? Did I use a contingency argument? And you, this individual, he spoke to other people with those arguments and it went forever and ever. It's like a Wordplay. Everyone in the comments yeah, was saying we don't understand yeah, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So exactly, yeah. and the, the conversation you had with other brothers that were just speaking about Tawheed, you said, like, bro, that makes sense. You know, the Islamic concept of God makes sense. That's your words, and you said that's the. If I was to follow a religion to believe in God, I'd probably, you know, be a Muslim. That's what I'm saying to you. What I'm saying to you, bro, yeah, if I give you some like advice, a sincere advice, to be fair, is that when you believe in evolution, I would recommend do some research. Understand how that process actually happened. How did a fish become a human being? How did that digestive system that's so complicated it absorbs the healthy nutrients? Expels the harmful waste. This system cannot be designed randomly. It must have a creator no, no, behind no, it. No, it's not necessarily randomly, it's true. 
It's tuned. Finely tuned. Finely tuned. Yeah, but come on, boys. Finely tuned. That fish finely tuning to a human being. Come on, think about it. We can't. We can't conceptualize. Does, does it make? Does, does it sound? Does it sound crazy? The sun is tuned. Can you imagine? The earth was know, yeah. a couple of millimeters to the left, a couple of millimeters to the right. It will burn, or it will, everyone will die. Yeah. And if, it, if it's too away, then everyone's going to be frozen to death. So yeah. that, this is what you can find too. Can I just add something yeah. else yeah. very quickly? Yeah. So when it comes to this, I think when we talk about evolution, we're talking about the scientific realm. So I think we should first establish the definition of the scientific method. Yeah. The scientific method is basically a collection of data that is based on observation, reproducibility, and experimentation. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything that they tell you scientifically is a fact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference the between a theory and a fact. So if you study the, um, the, the uh, if you study the basics of science, you have something called a hypothesis. Yeah. So hypothesis is just basically a set of propositions with, without a need of evidence. So you you can basically set forth any any propositions, any statements that you want to make, but you don't need evidence for that. But it becomes a theory when there's overwhelming evidence. Okay. But what, what scientists would tell you okay. is that just because it comes to the theory, it doesn't mean that it's a fact, it just gives you the best explanation. But there's no such thing as facts in science. It, 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 no, no, no. Facts, it can be a fact if, if it can be observed, if it can be repeated. So for example, like for example, engineering, making planes, for example, yeah, yeah. that's a scientific fact because it can observe, you can test it, repeat bacteria, for example, you know, you can put it under laboratory, you can test yeah. it, repeat. So that's the reason why what we're talking about is in the realm of theoretical science. Yeah. When it comes to, into the realm of theoretical science, it comes with a condition that, look, evolution may give you the best explanation, but it's provisional. Yeah. Meaning that it can be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, your, your faith based on evolution is not based upon certainty, it's based upon probability. So th that, that's my point, which is, why would you discard, why would you discard a knowledge that gives you certainty, but you would rather hold on to a belief that could be wrong in the next hundred years? Yeah. Religion could be wrong. Hmm? The religious like I said about Adam and Eve, that okay. could be wrong. Here, here's the thing, when we talk about Islam, we talk about based on certainty. Now, irrespective of whether you believe it or not, yeah. that's not the case. The case is we cannot have a discussion if you are on a level of doubt and I'm on a level of certainty. Yeah. You have to be certain about your belief, yeah. I have to be certain about my belief so that we can have a discussion. But and he's not certain though, that's the thing. That's the problem. He's not certain. And, and, and do you know what's amazing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he's mentioned, you know, I'm khulukum in ghayri shayn, I'm huma khalakun. Were they created by nothing? Or did they create themselves? I'm khalakus samawati wal ard. Or did they create the heavens and the earth? But la yuqinun. No certainty. Rather they're uncertain. Do you know what's amazing, right? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't even answer the question. Because he knows from your natural inclination with your sound intellect, you know that you did not come by nothing. Yeah. You know that you didn't create yourself. That's what Allah said about you, you know. In the end of the verse, he said exactly. they have no certainty. And exactly when the conversation I'm having with you, that's why I established. But my, my beliefs are not, they don't come from like, Question where we came from, but you don't need your life based on based on uncertainty. But I don't. You're certain that you exist. I'm certain that I'm, I exist. Yeah. I'm not that? certain. Like the question about evolution, the question about where we came from. So from your admission, no, you already believe there's the creator. No, no. I'm saying that. I'm saying that the, 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 those two things are not connected. No, no, no. The thing is, when you accepted we must come from something, you're no longer an atheist. You're no longer agnostic. No, no, no. We you must know? come from like the, the processes. What no, processes? Okay, wait, hang on, hang on. Do they have a will? Uh, wait, hang on, hang on. Allah even Allah even refutes that. I'm Khumul Khalakun. Did you did you did they create by themselves? We didn't create ourselves. Yeah. You cannot exist and not exist. Can that process time? create itself? Can that, that process, process exist cannot. and not exist at the same time? Like you know, like scientists today, they said that our our cells behave like computers. Now, if I was to tell you, look, this camera, this sophisticated camera, it has algorithms. It's got coding inside. It's got information inside. From your sound intellect and from your natural creation, would you ever say that this process has come by itself? No, no, no. no. Exactly. So why don't you apply the same why, logic to yourself? Not, and by the way, even scientists, scientists are even confirming that our dear, our cells behave like computers. That's why I'm giving you that example because I didn't make that out of thin air. Even scientists tell us that our cells behave like computers. So if you do not accept that this computer or this camera did not come by nothing, there must be an intelligence behind. What about our cells, which is more complex? Yes. And what I believe is, I believe that the brother is correct. I believe there's two different there's two different stumbling blocks to to exist to accept the existence of the creator. Mm. I believe you, you I believe that you already accept the existence of the creator. But what's stopping you is either two things. Shubhat, doubts, or shahwat, desires. I believe that you don't have doubts. I believe this is just a smoke screen. 
I believe what's stopping you is you're following your desires. And what's amazing, Allah says in Surah Al Furqan, chapter 25, verse 43, Allah says that do you not see the one who takes his desires as his own God? Now imagine this. Even in philosophy, you know, they, in philosophy, you must know this, right? People think that philosophers came up like some ground, groundbreaking principles regarding morality. Like, for example, Jeremy Bentham, the father of utilitarianism, yeah. saying that, you know, you have to maximize pain and minimize pain. And then John Stuart Mill comes, he introduces the harm principle because he saw the issue. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal, he already refuted them even before they were born, 800 years before. So Allah even refutes even philosophers like Jeremy Bentham, people like John Stuart Mill. So what's stopping you is that what you are worshipping is your desires. That's what's stopping you. Do not take your desires that's, as your own good. That's no, it. No, it's not, that's like, it. I, I wouldn't say it's desires. I just say I can't like, I can't conceptualize God. Why not? God? I can't understand. Today you come here with a no. nice suit on. You know, we're looking at the creation of the universe right now. We're thinking about God. Why can't you conceptualize it? No, you've already made the admission. Yeah. Implicitly, you've already made the admission that there is the creator. And you even said yourself that if there is the creator, Islam makes sense. If, if, it's coherent. If, yeah. yeah. And the so, Islamic Tawheed makes sense. Islamic Tawheed makes sense. Not the philosophy, not the other religions that other people say. Do you know what? I think what's stopping you is the state of submission. Yeah. That's yeah. what's stopping yeah. you. Yeah. You don't want to submit. But that's uh, where the desire comes that's in. That's where desire comes in. But you know, you know, even even if you look at anthropology, you look at sociology, studies have shown that everyone is born to worship something. Yeah. When we say worship, it means you're looking up something that's higher. Right. So in every civilization, they have gods. For example, they look up to Zeus or they look up to they Greek gods, etc. They have some sort. So when you're born, you're worshiping something. Either you're worshiping the society, you're worshiping your parents yeah. because you've been you've been conditioned. Yes. What's not amazing, money. not money, for example, you're probably worshiping money, right? So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said Salaam. that every child is born on Dina Fitr. Every child is born upon the natural inclination to submit to the Creator. But however, his parents make him a Jew or a Christian or a fire worshiper. Yeah. And what's amazing is that studies have shown, even in psychology religion, for example, Professor Justin Barrett, I can also cite Oliveira Petrovich, I can also cite Deborah Kaliban. This is, this is across many studies that shown that if children are not exposed to, um, to external influences from the parents of the society, all children would submit that there is the creator. Um, and what's amazing is that Professor Justin Barrett, when he, um, he explained that the founders, the conclusion, he said that when children are grown up, they actually, they actually question themselves that, look, if these trees and these rivers and these mountains, if they didn't, if we didn't build them, like we know that humans didn't build them, who built them? So they question them. So look, if we didn't build ourselves, if we didn't build this magnificent creation, there must be a creator. By the time they reach the age of four, all of them, they accept that there must be some high power. So Nothing. what's happening right now is you've been polluted. It's been conditioned. Uh, it's been polluted. Because this brother, this individual, has spoken to many people that were yeah. sending yeah. philosophy yeah. and using those philosophical yeah. arguments. That has caused people to have doubts. Yeah. I, I agree. Have I agree. Those type of elements yeah. in their brain. That's why we say to you, like even as Muslims, we would rec not recommend people to use philosophy in the dawah because yeah. it can confuse people. Yeah. Absolutely. And people even more further than they were. Yeah. No, I would imagine when you're, when you're having a conversation with another philosopher. He'll, uh, his argument will be philosophy, upon philosophy, yeah. but you're not going to go nowhere. Do you understand? Again, that foundation is man-made as well. Philosophy, who's it made by? It? Where did that criteria come from? Some individuals. Exactly. Not from, from the creator that created yeah. us. So exactly. when you use the foundation, which is the Quran and Sunnah, as you should be believing, yeah. our foundations are upon the ultimate truth. Yeah, exactly. That only is speak, only speaking, when you analyze the Quran, the Quran answers, refutes all philosophical arguments. Yeah. Like for example, you on the on the utility principle, Allah already refutes it even before they were born. Even before your philosophers were born, yeah. Allah already refutes them. Yeah. When was Jeremy Bentham born? 1647, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He was born around that time because I studied philosophy at levels. I know I'm not that knowledgeable, but I know the basics, right? You have John Stuart Mill. They were debating all of this. Wow, we're groundbreaking moral principle. Yeah. You know, maximize pain, minimize pain. And uh, John Stuart Mill, he said, you have the Lord of pain, you have the Lord of pleasure. Allah Azza wa already refuted it even before they were born. Yeah. How did a man 1400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, how did he know? How did he know that people worship their desires? How did they know that? How did he know that? Well, that's it was with an illiterate time. man as well. No, nobody said that. How did, how did the Prophet alayhi salatu salam knew, know the psychology of atheism? That yeah. their life is based on uncertainty. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. No, I, I would say me. it's based on that there's no objective meaning. 
Like that's that's the fundamental. No, no we do believe in objective. Uh, uh, there, there, no, there, there's, there's, there's no objective atheism. meaning. There's no there's no objectivity. But objective. you're not an atheist. You're not an atheist. Oh yeah. No, you're not. The moment you the moment you have admitted there is something, you're no longer an atheist. Processes, bro. You're not atheist anymore. No, no, I'm saying. You're an agnostic. I'm you're not. You're not an atheist. You're agnostic, you think the yeah. is the process. No, I'm saying that there, 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 there are explanations behind things. That doesn't mean I believe that there's like a first. No, no, no. I, look, I believe that I'm an atheist. I'll tell you why. I'm an atheist to other gods. Uh, other gods. <laughs> That's why we say La ilaha. Yeah. There's nothing. There's no deity worth it to be worshipped. Yeah. So me and you, let's come to common terms. Yeah. Let's come to common agreement. Yeah. Allah na that we worship none but Allah. So that's why I, I refuse to use the term God. I I refuse to use the term God. I refuse Trinity. I refuse Hindu gods, multiplicity of gods. I, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who deserves all worship. Yeah? That's why you're an atheist. You're, you're, you're an atheist towards other religions. You're atheist towards the Hindu gods yeah. or the Hindu conception of God or the Christian conception of God. But you can never be an atheist to the believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can never. Yeah. And, and that's why it makes sense to you. The most logical thing is that. Yes. No, I said, yeah. Yeah, if, if I were to be. Yeah. yeah. And what's happening right now is your, your fitra has been polluted by the conditioning, by uh, secondary, um, uh, secondary um, conditioning probably from your society or from your family right and i'll give you an analogy just to appreciate that have you read some parts of the quran i yeah, think yeah, i yeah. think you have yeah? Yeah, yeah doesn't the quran always say this is a reminder yeah, yeah. you always say reminder why is that i'll give an example yeah suppose suppose you and your partner you decide to move out of the house and you're going through all of your old bags etc and it's all dusty and then all of a sudden you found you find a toy you blow it they're like I remember I played this when I was four years old, I was five years old, that, that triggered you. But you forgot, why did you forget? Because you're busy now, you moved on from playing yeah. toys to PlayStation, then, yeah. then, then um, a degree, the university, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what the Quran does, the Quran is just reminding you what you already believed. And it's just triggering you. That's what Allah, as He said, that's what Allah Azza wa Jal, in nearly every ayah of the Quran, Allah keeps saying, look at my creation. Reflect, ponder. That's all Allah is reminding you. Allah just reminded you what you already believed when you were born. But unfortunately, it got corrupted. That's why authentic. That's why Allah has to reveal revelations time by time because because the people are worshiping false gods. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He keeps sending prophets and messengers to keep reminding them come back to the worship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala without any partners, non anthropomorphic God. Yeah, He was one and only, self-sufficient. No beginning, no end, no son, no no daughter, no wife. He's not born, nothing like him. And that's something you believe in already. But what's stopping you is your desires. That's what's stopping you. Your, your perception of other God made you believe that there is no God. And that's the problem. No, no, it's, it's you know? the, God, the idea of God itself. The idea of a creator. But where did you get the idea from? Your idea, your idea came from so. Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, all these other Islam. gods. No, you understand? Islam and Islam that's what okay. the problem was. There's three levels of certainty, yeah? There's got Ilm al Yaqeen. In Islam, there's three levels of certainty Ilm al Yaqeen, knowledge of certainty. Ayn al Yaqeen, empirical certainty. Haq al Yaqeen, experiential knowledge, or truth of knowledge. What you're asking for is Ayn al Yaqeen. You're looking for seeing is believing, okay? But even in your daily life, you still have certainty on knowledge, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, universal but knowledge. I, have, I, I, I think it's okay to have some degree of uncertainty yeah, in life. No. But not, not, not day to day, like day to day I know whatever, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But in terms of everything around us, like our universe, we, can't, we, we just don't know. God, man. But we don't know. I don't know. You, can, you can't say, you can't, no, no, do you know what, do you know what, I think, I think what's, I think the issue is, you're looking for the second level of certainty, yeah. which is empirical knowledge, empirical, empirical knowledge. But even from your own admission, you don't necessarily need to see things to believe. Yeah, even evolution, I'm sorry to say this, even Darwin evolution, yeah. you got no empirical evidence. You're making inference to the best explanation. That's inference to the best explanation. That's not empirical evidence. Even by what you're going, uh, you see, here's the problem. You, you have been affected by scientism. Yeah. Scientism become like a dogmatic belief, you know, everything that science say is objective reality, is true. You become a sheep. You, you become a sheep. Yeah, it's, it's infiltrated. 
we respect science, but we do it in a proper perspective. And what's happening right now, now you're saying, yeah, but we have evidences millions of years ago, you know, we see the fossil few, uh, fossil records, etc. Yeah. But you're only making inference of the best explanation. That's not empirical evidence. You're making an assumption. Everything is an assumption. No, no, hang on. Why so why are you willing to why are you willing to have that leap of faith to something that you do not empirically but, see, but when it comes to the creator but you need to have a leap of faith. I see the double religion. standards. Hmm? You need to have a leap of faith in religion. Because you need to you, you need to take that step. You no, to, justified you belief. Meaning that I've got evidence. Yeah, not blind belief. I've got justified belief. If I can validate to you that the Quran is the speech of Allah and yeah. Prophet Muhammad says the Messenger of Allah, yeah. that's sufficient. But, but you'll need to validate to me all the stories, like I said, Adam and Eve. All of these, the fact that humans were the first creation, the creation began with humanity. But if I can prove to you that Prophet Muhammad says the Messenger of God, yeah. that's an indirect evidence. Yeah. No, but that, 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 these are two separate things. No, I'm, that's I'm just. Talking, no. I'm talking about what's, what's written in Not the necessarily, Quran. not necessarily. What you're asking for is direct evidence. Mm. But indirect evidence, you even accept it. Darwin evolution, yeah. you're accepting not direct evidence, yeah. indirect evidence. Indirect, yeah. So if that is the case, why aren't you willing to scrutinize the religion of Islam by using those same principles that you use? Like I said, I'm scrutinizing, so you accept, I'm so, scrutinizing so you accept the story so if, of Adam and Eve. Good. So if you accept that Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, whatever he conveyed about Adam and Eve and Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, etc., then it must be true. He can't be lying. That's testimonial evidence. Like even in philosophy, there's a debate, even David Hume, even David Hume's, imagine the most skeptical Scottish philosopher. Do you know what he said? He said, even there's a probability that miracle can be proven true. As long as the, t the testimony that comes from is proven to be reliable. Even David Hume, am, am I correct or am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like Professor, uh, Professor Cody and, and uh, uh, David Hume. David Hume even accepts that. Even the most skeptic Scottish philosopher, he even said that you can accept miracles if the testimony is reliable. And I believe that Prophet Muhammad is a reliable uh, testimony evidence for me. And that's the reason why I believe in Adam and Eve. That's why I believe in Noah, Abraham. These are from the unseen. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi either he's speaking the truth, either he's lying, either he's deluded. What, yeah. what, what's your belief about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I don't know. You know? I'd say that, you know, like, I just, I think that these are two separate things. Like, like I said, with Adam and Eve, yeah. you have to prove that they were the first creation. But you didn't, yeah, but you didn't ask for proof of Darwin evolution. That's not direct evidence, that's indirect evidence. But, that's that's at the least, problem. You're asking, least, but at least it takes into account. More no, 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 no. You're knowledge. making inference to the best explanation. That's a philosophical. You're putting your faith in a philosophical assumption. You know what inference to the best explanation means? It means inference to the best explanation means it's not empirical evidence. It's not direct evidence. It's an indirect evidence. If you're applying this, why can't you apply when it comes to the Quran? I don't get it. When it comes to Islam, why can't you accept indirect evidence? If I can prove to you that Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, then this, that's an indirect evidence that Adam and Eve existed. Because, because, of his, the because of his it's testimony. Yeah, because of the validity of a testimony. testimony. Even David Hume, even David Hume, a Scottish philosopher, even he, even he says that you can believe in miracles if the testimony is reliable and he's speaking the truth. Anyway. So, what do you believe about Prophet Muhammad? Oh. Come on, he cannot, he cannot lie. He cannot be deluded, so he must be speaking the truth. So that's the indirect evidence, and that's testimonial evidence that Adam and Eve existed. Then what? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you know Islam is true. It's a matter of time you accept yeah. Islam, inshallah. Listen, inshallah. You're there, man. Inshallah. Close, but <laughs> May Allah guide you. May Allah guide you to Islam. Yeah. I mean, take care. Man, you're a respectful individual, but please, Michael, Michael, remember about death. Think about it. Remember death. Sorry. Not enough. Take care of yourself. Inshallah. Do you want to conclude? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine.